Hi everybody, I'm Dennis Fix, owner of Far West Landscape and Garden Center. Today's class is on how to grow bodacious blueberries in the Treasure Valley. So, we're going to start this off with a little fact or fiction. See if you can answer these questions. Do blueberries need shade? Get a lot of people calling me up saying my, never, my blueberries never used to grow, so I put them in shade. I think that's what they needed. That's actually fiction. In Treasure Valley here, the blueberries like full sun. Mine were in full sun. You look at some of the U-Pick places around, the one out in Eagle, the one out in Meridian, the one in Emmett, they're all in full sun. So I think we've pretty well proven that that's a, uh, not a fact, that you can't put your blueberries in full sun. Fact or fiction? Blueberries need two blueberries in order to pollinize and get a good crop of blueberries. A little bit of both on that one. Blueberries out from the company Bushel and Barrel, their manufacturer, and they're making a lot of very nice blueberries that are self-pollinizing. So therefore, you can get away with a single blueberry if you need to, and they will put, it will produce blueberries for you. However, most blueberries need two blueberry plants in order to pollinize and have a good crop of blueberries. Blueberries usually have early blooming, mid blooming, and late blooming varieties. And as long as they're flowering at the same time, they will pollinize for each other. And as long as those blueberries are in your yard, they don't even have to be right next to each other, the bees will take care of the, the pollinization and you will get blueberries. The biggest part about that is make sure that you get bloom cycles that cross over with each other. So if you get yourself an early blooming variety and a mid blooming variety, they'll still, they'll still both be in bloom at the same time. They'll cross pollinize for each other and you'll get a great, great crop. Earlies, two earlies, two mids, two lates, an early and a mid, or a mid and a late. The only combination that does not work is if you get an early blooming variety and a late blooming variety. This one will be done blooming before this one starts. The pollinization will not happen. You'll get a few blueberries, but you won't get enough to make it worthwhile. So make sure you get two blueberries, unless you're going to do the bushel and barrel varieties. If you're going to do those, Right now, the varieties they have are very limited, and they're more very tight bush ones that are good, work really good in containers. All right, last facts or, fact or fiction. Do blueberries grow well in the Treasure Valley? I get a lot of people that have failures with their blueberries and say, you know what, they're just not for our area. That is totally fiction. Blueberries work fantastic. I had a bunch of blueberry plants in my, at my old house out in Eagle. We had big blueberries, lots of blueberries, and they do very, very well but you've got to know what to do with them how to grow them how to put them in the ground and what they need and that's pretty much what we're going to talk about today so what do blueberries need well they need sun we talked about that they really like full sun if you've got a partial sun location that's okay as long as they're getting six hours of good sunlight so a morning shade afternoon sun would be fine or an all-day sun would be great but really don't want them in a shady location they want a very well-drained soil. They've got a very fibrous root system, very shallow root system, and they like a well-drained soil. If you plant them in a low spot in the yard, if you plant them in the Boise's hard soil, um, if you put them in some place where the water sits around them, they're not going to do well. They're not going to like you at all. So make sure you get a well-drained soil. So make sure you mix that soil up with some acid planting mix, which, which is this stuff right here. We're going to talk about more about that in a minute. They also... Uh, they're very hardy for Boise. People want to know if they get the hardiest variety. They're plenty hardy. They grow anywhere in Boise, anywhere in the Treasure Valley. They're very, very hardy. Winter is not a problem with them. They're a great, great plant. So the biggest part about blueberries that everybody has a problem with is blueberries hate our soil. Our soil is heavy clay and it's very, very alkaline. If you look at it on a scale, most of Boise Treasure Valley soil is 7.5 to 8.2. Well, that's very, very alkaline. In, in Oregon, where most of the blueberries are grown around this area that we get to, to eat, the fresh ones we get in the store and stuff, they're grown at 4.1 to 5.1. We can't get our soil to 4.1. We just, it's just not possible. There's just too much alkaline soil out there. But we can get it to 5.1. That's what the value, the pH value of the acid planting mix is. So when you're planting your blueberries, what you're going to do is you're going to dig out your native soil and you're going to pitch it somewhere else. Use it in another part of your yard, build a berm, give it to your neighbors, but you're going to get rid of it. You're going to carve out that hole. It's going to be about an 18 by 18 or 20 by 20 inch hole. And you're going to fill it up 100% with the acid planting mix. We're going to put the acid planting mix in there and then we're going to nestle that blueberry right in the center of it. Finish packing in that acid planting mix around it. And that gives it the acidic nature that the blueberries like. That should bring your pH of that area that the blueberry is living in 
right into around 5.1, 5.5. And then we're gonna add sulfur every year after that, twice in the spring, and that's gonna keep the pH. Sulfur lowers the pH, but it takes a long time to do it. So if you're adding sulfur to an existing patch, trying to lower the pH, you're only lowering it a little tiny bit every six months. So it's way better, it's critical, that we just basically start with acid planting mix in the hole. So, acid planting mix and sulfur. Those are the two things we're gonna to do to make sure that they grow well. Full sun, acid planting mix. Now, where are we gonna plant them? We're gonna plant them in full sun, we talked about that, but what are we gonna put them in? We can put them in a pot and pot. If you've got a really pretty glazed pot or a half a whiskey barrel, blueberries are fine in that situation, as long as it's about a 15, 18 to 20 inch wide uh, pot for it. So it's got plenty of room to wrap. Depth is not important because they're only going to really root in the top 12 inches, but you want to make sure you get the width because they've got a very fine wort system that'll spread out. You can also put them in a raised planter bed if you want to. Uh, a lot of people are doing the raised garden beds and you can fill that garden bed with your regular potting soil and then right where you plant them, you're going to dig that area out and put in the acid planting mix. A lot of people do a pot and pot system. And I brought one up and basically these are two 20 gallon black plastic growers pots and we sell these and they'll sink one pot down into the ground and then they'll slide the other pot down inside of it. That keeps uh, the soil inside of this to stay very acidic. You're going to fill this up with the acid planting mix, you're going to keep it very acidic and you're not going to have the native soil which is very very alkaline slowly turning away at the pH factor of the soil inside. The reason we do pot and pot is because you can see these have holes in the bottom for drainage they got holes in the bottom for drainage, and that allows the water, when you water these, to drain through. There's a gap, a two to four inch gap in the bottom of this, so the water can drain through the pot that the blueberry is sitting in, drain into the other pot, and then eventually perk out on the ground, so you never really get this to a point where it fills up. You can set one in the ground, slide the other one inside of it, fill it up, and away you go. If you are, gonna, if you are going to plant in a container or a pot and pot system, make sure you put a drip system on it. They, they're, they need a lot of water when they're um, producing berries. So you're gonna wanna make sure you get a drip system on them. Spray systems work, drips work better, puts the water right at their base, right where the roots are. Um, you treat them a lot like a, you would a hanging basket. Hanging baskets you're watering every day, every other day. Blueberries, when you're in the season, when the blueberries are coming on, you need to water them every day or every other day. When they're a pot and pot system or a container system, they're not getting much water from the surrounding soil. So again, you're watering them a little more often. The other way we could plant these, of course, is just out in the yard. I think blueberries are a fantastic landscape plant. You've got uh, other plants in your yard, red twig dogwoods, maybe a burning bush. They give you one show of color. Why not put a blueberry in there? A blueberry gives you a spring blossom. It gives you a blueberry, some fruit for you. It gives you a red fall color. They're easy to grow. They really only like to be about three by three or four by four, so they're just a great landscape plant that is giving multi-season interest. So take out those burning bush, put in a few blueberries, put them in, plant them right, and they're gonna add a lot of accent. Last place I see them being used is, of course, in a, in a bed. You wanna have a blueberry, a row of blueberries along the back fence. That works great too. Just get your area prepped up, get the weeds out, dig your holes, drop them in, put them about three to four feet apart, and make sure your rows are about four to five feet apart. Mistake I made when I was out in Eagle is I put them really close together and then I added a couple more and then as they grew up I got to the point where I could not reach into the middle blueberries so I basically got down on my hands and knees crawling underneath there to pull all those blueberries down so give yourself some space so that you've got more room to get in there and pick them and enjoy them. One of the common questions I get about blueberries is people have had um, lack of success or they've got blueberries in that are not doing very well almost always it's because they did not plant them with the acid planting mix and they're wanting to know what to do at this point can they nurse them back what should they do they've been in for two years and they're starting to go downhill they're not looking good they're not growing definitely not producing my suggestion on that is if they've been in the last two to three years is dig them up dig around them lift them up out of the ground dig your 18 inch round hole take that soil and throw it out put a bag of acid planting mix in there and put those blueberries back in there with a the treatment of fertilizer and sulfur. They're not gonna do anything for you this year, but the following year they should come back and do fantastic for you. I tried that also in Eagle, that's why I'm teaching this class. It's the first year I put blueberries in, I just dug three holes, dropped three blueberries in it, planted them like I would in my trees and my shrubs, and over three years they all went downhill. Two of them in really bad shape, so I read about it, learned about how to grow blueberries, 
dug those holes back up, dug those two plants back up, dug those holes up, added acid plenty mix and put those two back in. I took the third one, he was the best of the three and I didn't want to take a chance of losing him. So I dumped a bunch of sulfur on him to change the pH. The following year, the two that I dug up were bearing fruit for me. And not a lot, but they had made the, they'd turned the corner from being going downhill to coming up and starting to bear fruit. The third one was still struggling along. Two years later, the first two looked like brand new, wonderful plants. Big, beautiful, bearing heavily. The third one was coming along nicely, but still was behind. I wish I'd have dug up all three, set them aside, replanted the holes. If your plant's too big or you just can't get around to redigging them, you can try a sulfur treatment. It's a slower process and it, and it might help you out, but I highly, highly recommend digging them out. If it's the heat of the summer, don't do it. If it's spring, definitely do it. Um, again, a fibrous, shallow root system should be pretty easy to get a couple shovels underneath it, lift it out, set it to the side, dig all your amendments into it, and turn around and set that thing back in. You also want to plant them just a little bit high. With the acid planting mix and the fact that they don't like to sit in water, you want those plants to kind of be planted with a little bit of a crown to them. You want them up a little bit. You want a little bit of the top of that root ball showing. And then over time, you're going to find that that compost breaks down and they settle down just a little bit, gets them back to just a slight mount, just to about flat. So make sure you always plant them a little bit high. Um, the other people, questions, common questions I get are, are there bugs that bother them? Are there diseases that bother them? And really, no. If you've got some air circulation around the, your blueberry plants, I really don't see any disease problems. Everybody brings in problems. They're usually almost always soil and water and fertilizing problems. Um, so no disease problems, really no insect problems. They've got a shallow root. I do see a few people get out there and start using action hose or a shovel to chop out the roots or chop out the weeds over the top of them. And because they have such a fibrous top root system, every time you go and chop a weed, you're also chopping some roots. So you want to make sure you get your patch pretty cleaned up before. And then we're going to add mulch over the top of them every year, about three inches of mulch over the top of them. We're going to use the organic soil building compost on top of that. It's also acidic in nature. It's already broken down and decomposed. And it's going to add a couple of inches, two to three inches on top. It's going to hold our moisture in. It's going to stop our weed growth from happening. So let's go kind of back through it again. What are we going to do? We're going to pick out a blueberry. And it doesn't really matter if you do a little one gallon guy like this. You're going to do a two gallon pot here like that, or if you're going to get away with one of these really big six gallon plants that are ready to roll. You're going to dig out a hole 18 inches around. You're going to throw the soil out. You're going to put an acid planting mix. You're going to plant them a little bit high. We're going to add sulfur and fertilizer to them. We're going to put some compost over the top of them. We're going to put a drip irrigation um, drip emitter right on top of the, the root ball to make sure they stay good and watered. The last thing we're going to do when we plant, and you are going to hate me for this, but it's the best thing to do, is when you get a new blueberry, and it's if, depending on the time of year, right now these guys are in bloom right now, you're going to need to come in here and pull the flowers off. And right now you're going, oh, why did he tell me to do it? I bought the blueberry for the berries. Well, these guys want to give you fruit so much that they'll put all their energy into these flowers, which then turns into the berries, and you get a great crop the first year, and the plant doesn't establish itself. It put all of its energy into, into giving you some fruit that you didn't get a good healthy plant. So the first year, and I don't care if you do a one gallon or a two gallon or these big six gallons, you need to take these flowers off or the fruit off. If it's later in the year, you need to pick it off. You need these plants to put all their energy into rooting out. This one, this one comment I make, and we talk about it in our class, people try different ways to get around it. Well, I'll leave it in the, in the grower's pot this year, and then I'll plant it next year. Well, whatever year you plant it, you've got to pull the flowers off. You've got to pull the fruit off. It's hard to do, but if you look at the long-term success of this, if you want to get the bowl after bowl after bowl of, of fruit, then you need to take these flowers off. So, sorry about that. I'm going to have to just do it. Uh, oh, let's talk about fertilizing. So fertilizing on these guys, I always recommend fertilizing twice a year, St. Patrick's Day and on Memorial Day. St. Patrick's Day, and we're going to do two things on the fertilizing day. We're going to put so soil sulfur on it. Soil sulfur is going to lower the pH and keep it in acidic nature. We're going to do this. This is not a food. This is totally about changing the soil structure, making sure the pH is low so that it's acidic, so the blueberries are very, very happy where they are. Every St. Patrick's Day and every Memorial Day, you're going to put an application of this on. At the same time, 
you're going to put on one of these two fertilizers on here. The organic azalea camellia rhododendron food or the bougainvillea and flowering vine food on there. This is a synthetic that we manufactured fertilizer. And this is a little bit higher in nitrogen and phosphorus, but it's also got a quite a bit of sulfur in it. So I really, really like that one. Or I've almost converted, well, I have converted all my gardening, edible gardening to organic. So this is an organic lower 434, very little sulfur in it. So we're going to just use a little more of our soil sulfur. We're going to put some on our blueberries, follow the manufacturer's instructions. It's like a half a cup on a small plant. After about a year, two or three, you're going to probably put a full cup of fertilizer on it twice a year. Fertilizers only last about six weeks. So the first fertilizing on, on St. Patrick's Day is going to get you into May. It's going to promote the growth. It's going to help those flowers. You can get a big healthy plant. And then we're going to turn around and fertilize these guys again on Memorial Day. By then the berries are starting to form. With the berries forming, the plant going into stress from pr putting all of its energy into it, we're giving it another feeding to help it stay healthy through the fruit production. And that's going to get the bigger, healthier uh, fruit for you and more of it. Last thing is watering. Watering on these guys because they have a shallow fibrous root system that we've talked about. They need quite a bit of water. Early in the spring, you're only going to have to water maybe once a week. Putting a drip emitter on there. I use two, one on each side of the plant, two gallon per hour emitter. So I'm basically putting four gallons of water on it if I run that drip emitter for an hour. I usually run that once a week in March and April. Once it starts to warm up late April and all through May, I'm going to run it twice a week. Once I really get some fruit production going on, I'm going to run that three times a week. Once I really start to see the fruit plumping up and start to color up, I'm going to water that every other day or every day based on what my soil conditions are like. I treat it like a hanging basket. If I leave my hanging basket outside, it's a very root bound and it's in the sun. If I leave it out there for two days and don't water it, it's going to die. Your blueberries are not going to die if you don't water them in two days, but your fruit might start to shrivel up or may not fully produce to a very large size. I've gotten um, blueberries the size of quarters before. I've got pictures of them I could show you if you come down the nursery. And I've got a handout for all this information we're talking about. I've got the handout for you down here at the Garden Center. We've got the blueberries for you. We've got the acid planting mix and the fertilizer. So come see us and we'll get you all the information. We'll help you get, be successful gardeners on that. So. Last thing that I want to talk about is the pruning of the blueberries. Everybody wants to know what do I have to do to prune them? Well, they're not that fast at growing blueberries. So for the first three years, you're not really doing any pruning. You might take out a broken branch or something that's shot up with a bunch of growth that looks kind of odd. You may come in there and cut that down just a little bit. But most of the plant you're going to pretty well leave alone. After about three years, you're going to get a pretty good sized bush out of that. It's growing really well and you're getting some good shots of growth. Blueberries produce on the new wood, the top wood in here. So if we just keep having top wood, we're going to have a very tall plant with all the fruit at the top and nothing down at the bottom. So after about the third year, you're going to go in there. And if, if you had four branches up here, every year you're going to take one of the branches out down about 15 to 30 percent of the way down the down into the into the into the bush. That will help it branch out with new wood, which will produce fruit for you next year. But we don't want to take them all off at once. We're taking off all of our fruiting wood. So this year I'm going to take it out, this one out, if, if it's a three-year-old plant, and then it's going to grow back. Next year I'm going to take another one out, and the next year I'm going to take a different one out. And we're just going to come in at different points and take out about every third or every fourth branch down. Maybe it depends on how, which bush you get and how big they grow. But figure 15 to 30 percent, we're going to prune back into the bush and cut it off, letting it re-sucker up, re-branch out, not sucker up, branch out, producing more wood, which produce more fruit for you. The way I did this with the program that I was doing, I was, and I had early season, mid season, and late season bloomers, which meant I had early season blueberries, mid season blueberries, and late season blueberries, because I wanted to pick the whole season long. I started getting berries in late June and I finished picking berries in the 1st of September. And by always having new wood, I always had plenty of berries. I was taking a bowl this size and filling it every three days for that whole span of time. So that's a lot of blueberries. It's great because I love blueberries. People always ask me which is the favorite blueberry. My favorite blueberry is a ripe blueberry, a homegrown ripe blueberry. They are so good. Sometimes you want a lot of little ones because you're going to do a lot of freezing with them. You want to pick them all at one time. I like some of the bigger ones because they didn't take as long to pick and they were like, they were like dessert. It was like having a, an Oreo, a blueberry Oreo that were so big and so juicy and wonderful. So anyway, that should be most of it. So summing, summing it up again, we're going to plant at least two plants. We're going to plant them high. 
We're going to plant them in an acid planting mix. We're going to give them sulfur and fertilizer twice a year on St. Patrick's Day and on Memorial Day. We're going to water them well, watering them more as the fruit comes on. And that's about it. You really, that's about all there is to it. So good luck. Thank you for watching and I'll see you down here at the garden center.